Hey there, everybody. <clears throat> Can you guys all hear my voice and see the screen right now? Just give me a little shout out if you can. Cool. So uh, today we're going to kind of go through the session in a couple of parts. Um, we're going to talk about uh, trading binary options, but talk about some of the more complex strategies that you can do and use binary options to set up. Um, most traders that trade binaries or have you know some type of passing familiarity with them really only kind of use them for one type of trade setup, either to get long the market, get short the market, or to uh, you know play some type of breakout. Uh, there are ways that traders can use these products to express views that are a little bit more complex than simply I think markets going up or I think markets going down and that's kind of what we're going to talk about here but before we do that we're going to go through a basic overview of uh, the basics of binary options and then talk a little bit about uh, some of these uh, these more complex ideas uh, that we can use in our binary options trading okay so <clears throat> let's see here uh, what um, we can do with these more complex strategies. And before we get started, I will have to read our standard boilerplate risk disclaimer. So just bear with me for a second here. Trading on Nadex involves financial risk. It may not be appropriate for all investors. The information presented here is for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility. Past performance is not indicative of future results and Nadex instruments include Forex stock indexes and commodity futures. Uh, Nadex binary options and spreads can be volatile and investors risk losing their investment on any given transaction. However, the limited risk nature of Nadex contracts ensures investors cannot lose more than the cost to enter the transaction. Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC. And here's our, our uh, risk disclaimer. <clears throat> I'll fly through this one really quickly. Day trading, short-term trading, options trading, and futures trading are extremely risky undertakings. They are generally not appropriate for someone with limited capital, little or no trading experience, and or a low tolerance for risk. Never execute a trade unless you can't afford to and are prepared to lose your entire investment. All trading operations involve serious risks, and you can lose your entire investment. No trades or recommendations or advice, and we cannot be sued for losses of capital. All trades are for educational purposes only. Please contact your broker or registered investment advisor for execution, margin, and capital requirement questions. Everyone watching present this presentation adheres to all disclaimers optionhacker.com and alphashark.com. Okay, so before we talk about binary options, I just want to tell you guys about who I am, just so we uh, can get to know each other here. I'm good. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not that good. Trust me, if you read that same passage, you know, 500 times <laughs> over the course of uh, four and a half years or so, you'd probably be able to do it in your sleep <laughs> or with your eyes closed. Um, but my name is James Romelli. I work here at a firm based out of Chicago um, called Alpha Shark Trading. And what we focus on, uh, for the most part, is uh, active trading in futures, stocks, options, and other derivatives products. And because we have such a heavy derivatives focus, Nadex, binary options and spreads, are something that we like a whole lot. And we're going to talk a lot about why it is uh, these are great products for derivatives traders and really a fantastic product for a non-derivatives trader to kind of get used to derivatives markets with. Um, you know, not only are they a good place to kind of start, but even for experienced traders, they offer dynamics that you really can't replicate in the regular equity options market or index options market or futures market or options on futures market. So regardless of kind of where you're coming from <clears throat> here into this presentation, I think you're going to see that these products could very uh, much benefit your trading plan because there's probably nobody in here that can say they don't trade any of the products that Nadex has listed contracts for. So we always start all of our presentations out the same way. Um, if you want to be more powerful in life, educate yourself. It's that simple. And that's kind of why um, you know binary options have become such an interest for me personally <clears throat> is because they give me the ability to structure trade setups that I wouldn't be able to with other markets. Um, what's, I think, one of the most important things that a trader can do is increase their tool set. And we like analogies because I think that <laughs> they help explain, you know, exactly what it is uh, 
these things are about. And you know, when you talk about a product, I hear this all the time from people, and I, I never ever understood this frame of mind or the logic behind this statement. But people say, you know, I already I already trade four X and and options and futures, why do I need to learn another thing? Like, I'm, I'm doing fine with what I have. And I always say that's kind of like someone who's a contractor or a handy person saying, well, you know, I already have this bag of tools. Why do I need another tool? Well, you never know when you're going to have a job that you might need that tool for. And then when it does come up, you're going to be glad that you had it. So learning more about these products <clears throat> is really just like expanding your tool set. Um, every single trade, every single setup that you see, you will have more tools to approach that job. And that's always a good thing. It's never a bad thing <clears throat> to have an understanding of multiple ways of approaching the same idea. Because don't get me wrong, not every single trade setup is going to be a setup where the binary play is the best approach. Sometimes the futures might be the best approach. But a lot of times, they won't be, and something else might be better. And that's why it's important to understand these. So we're going to kind of go over a very basic overview of how these uh, listed binary options work. We'll go over a couple of examples of uh, setups in these uh, instruments. And then we're going to jump right into live setups here in real time, in the real time market. I actually. Uh, put a little <clears throat> trade on in my demo account this morning uh, and wrote about it uh, on binaryoptions.nadex and uh, we'll go over that trade as well because it ended up working out really well. And I'll show you guys why I uh, did the trade that I did and uh, the signal that led to it. So just before, so I have like a good idea or at least a general idea of where everybody stands now. How many of you have traded an actual binary option before on Nadex in the past? And I don't mean traded a binary option in some you know shifty overseas broker because those contracts are very, very different from the ones that Nadex lists. So yeah, a lot of you have some, some on demo, some have done it before. Yeah, okay, so a lot of you guys have a good understanding of how these things work. Well, good number of you are also saying I have an account but haven't made a trade yet. So maybe you're a little apprehensive with um, uh, actually pulling the trigger and uh, kind of understanding these. So we'll go through this relatively quickly. But a binary option is a financial instrument with a payoff that is a fixed amount or nothing at all. This is why it's called a binary option. There's two outcomes on expiration. Settling at a fixed amount or zero. For Nadex, that fixed amount is $100 and zero is always zero. But Nadex defines these contracts as a security that asks a simple yes or no question, will this market be above this price at this time, right? Most derivatives contracts have some, you know, function of time involved in them. Will the pr will price of market X be at this level at this time? Here is the option. Nadex options are unique in that they have some really, um, uh, some really, uh, interesting expirations for us to work with. What's nice about them is that there's a, hand, you know, a lot of intraday expiries. So for a day trader, it really is a option meant for you know, being able to take advantage of short-term moves in the underlying market. And we're going to talk about some of the structures of the contracts and what makes that even more um, uh, beneficial for day traders as we go into this. But even though the, we do have um, uh, are binary options available at other brokers? Like no, so inter, like if Thinkorswim Interact Interactive Brokers, they do not um, list <coughs> binary options on the markets that Nadex does. Nadex actually isn't a broker; they're an exchange. So if you trade on Nadex, you actually become a member of the exchange. But um, yeah, you trade directly on the Nadex exchange. So. Even though these contracts kind of uh, lend themselves well to day trade setups, there still is applications for other types of trades. And that's what we're going to talk about kind of into the end of the presentation here as well. Um, so basically, the um, trades set up like this. 
<clears throat> if you think that the market will be above a certain price at a certain time, I'm a buyer of the binary option. If I think that it's going to be below at that time, I'm a seller of the binary option. Okay. If the market settles below the strike price, it settles, the contract settles with a value of zero. If it settles above the strike price level of the contract, it settles at $100. So I'm going to always be buying or selling these contracts for some price in between zero and 100 bucks. So what does that mean? That means that no matter what, I know at the onset of the trade exactly what my risk and reward is. Let me ask you guys this question. If I buy a binary option for 50 bucks, what is my maximum risk? What is my maximum risk? 50 bucks, right? Exactly. In no scenario, yeah, plus plus the uh, plus the exchange fees. In no scenario does the market move where it leads to a larger loss than that $50. And it's really difficult to replicate something like that with standard options or options on futures. And I know because someone says this to me all the time, well, why can't you know I use calls on S&P futures? That would be the exact same type of setup, right? And they can't be worth less than zero, but we run into some problems when we start to use options in, on futures. One, they're rather expen they can be rather expensive. S&P options have a relatively low tick value, but take a look at this. I mean, there's strikes every five points, but given that there's three day days left to expiration, even if I bought the at the money calls here, they're not going to be super responsive to the underlying. If the market rallies two points, these aren't going to you know, explode in value. Where binary options can see a very large move in the underlying value, or in the value of the contract, on a small move in the, in the value of the underlying. And the contracts are standardized, which makes them easy to understand from market to market. I think that's one of the best things about binary options, hands down. I mean, let's take a look at that again in S&P futures. So here we have some, some uh, S&P E-mini S&P 500 futures options. Market's at 22.71. So let's say I wanted to buy the 22.75 calls. A one lot would cost me $247.50 if I bought it at 495, right? So the tick value is shown there. But what if I were to try and trade crude oil options? It's taking a second to load, I apologize. <laughs> uh, so I'll let that load up to the side. Well, the point that I was trying to make is that a one lot in crude oil options might require me to put out an even larger amount of capital. And take a look at this. The only options I have available to me are ones that are expiring in 22 days. So with the market at 5345, if I come in and buy the 53 uh, half binary option, look at that, it's a dollar and fifty cents. But that's actually a fifteen hundred dollar multiplier. So when we're talking about options on futures, from market to market, the contracts are not the same. And it's very difficult to approach all of these different markets with the same amount of risk because the tick sizes don't really give me um, the ability to do that, right? <clears throat> so it gives me access to a number of markets that I wouldn't be able to trade otherwise if I'm using binary options. The contract specs are the same regardless of the market, uh, meaning they trade with the same tick value and um, they can settle at either 100 or 0, just like every other market. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So the first one is crude oil futures, and you can tell this is a little bit older of an example. <clears throat> Not too old. But here we have crude oil trading at 49 quarter. I sell the crude oil greater than 49 daily binary option for 80 bucks. My risk is $20 per one lot. My reward is $80 per one lot. Why is that what my risk and reward is? Well, if the most the contract can be worth is $100 and I sell it for $80, well, 
Well, then the most it can go to is 100. If I sell it for 80, it goes to 100. I lose 20 bucks. If I see the contract expire worthless, then my profit is the $80 that I sold it for. So take a look at uh, the two scenarios at the bottom here. Basically, you can see it works just as I described it. And if we were to compare this to something in the uh, Euro USD currency pair, it works the exact same way. Contract can be worth 100 or it can be worth uh, zero. So when we're looking at this, it tells me, hey, you can't lose more than $40 in this trade. You can't make more than $60 in this trade. So it's a really well-defined reward to risk setup, right? So if I'm getting long the pair in this example, which I am, the market's at one spot, one, two, six, two, one, I'm getting long the one spot, two, six, six contracts. If the market moves higher at 3 p.m. expiry, the option settles at 100 bucks. I bought it for 40, $60 in profit on a $40 risk is a really nice reward to risk ratio. If the market closes below one spot 266 at expiry, contract settles at zero, I lose my $40, it's time to move on to the next trade. So does this make sense to everyone? Do we all understand how these work? Someone shout out a market and we'll go over a, a trade We'll go over a couple of trade examples now, um, live in real time, so you can uh, get another a better idea. The Dow, sure. So <clears throat> here's the Nadex platform, and I do have a live account as well. But uh, let's take a look at something someone requested for Wall Street 30. So this kind of illustrates how flexible. Um, uh, yeah, this is the demo platform. <clears throat> this kind of illustrates just how flexible um, uh, you can get with um, uh, binary options. So take a look. I mean, and we're already into, it's almost noon here in Chicago, right? So um, uh, we still have a 1 p.m., 2 p.m. daily and weekly expiry, okay? So let's say, let's take a look at an example in the weekly options, and this is called the ladder chart. It's going to show me a chart of the Dow, of the underlying indicative, along with all the options that I have here to trade. That's weird. Why is there only one strike? Let's look at the daily ones then, I guess. Okay, so here we have a chart of the of the Wall Street 30, and I can add any um, uh, type of indicators that I want onto here. So here we can see what on the 15 minute bar, pretty strong, right? So let's say that I um, uh, wanted to get long. And I had an idea of where I thought the market could go uh, by the end of the day today. These are the daily expiry binary options. We're trading at 19,831. And I think that, you know, with the Dow being up as much as it is here and it still being relatively early in the session, I could pretty easily see another 20 handles out of the market to the upside today. So I go in and try and pick a strike. Here I have one that's a little less than 20 handles to the upside and if I click that it'll open up the order ticket for me. You can see they're 31 at 36 half. I'm going to bid 35 for these and see if I get a fill. So I have that order working now. So going back to my chart I now have bid $35, and you can see my bid there, for the 19,850 binary options. So what this means is that now, here's this line in the sand, right? If the market breaks above this level and closes above this level at the expiration of this option, this contract will be worth $100, okay? 
how much did I pay for it? Well, if I would have paid $35 for it, what is my return on risk here? If I make $65 on $35 worth of risk, I'm getting about 1.8 to 1 on my money, right? So how would I have to set up a trade in the futures to replicate that? It would be pretty darn hard. How could I get, and let's just, you know, let's say that, Let's say that I got filled in these for 30. Let's say I was getting, you know, two to one on my money. How would I, how would I, you know, set a stop loss? If I got long here at 19,038 and wanted 1.81 to my money on a 12 point move to the upside, where would my stop loss need to be? It would need to be pretty small, like eight points, which in Dow futures is nothing. It's just asking to get chopped up. And what's nice about trading binary options is that I can approach this really any way that I want to. Let's say that I, you know, am not so sure that the market is going to continue to rally to the upside by the end of the day. I'm not looking for a really aggressive move to the upside, to the upside, but let's say that um, I think that we have some decent support here that I can play off of. Well, here we have this strike of binary options the 19810. So these are 26 points in the money. If I bid 75 for these and get filled here, what is my reward to risk ratio? Well, if they settle at 100, I make $25 in profit and I just got filled. My risk is 75, right? So 25 into 75 I'm still profiting about 33% on my risk if this trade settles at 100. Now, how hard would it be for this to happen? I mean, the market can rally, it can trade flat, it can even sell off as long as it stays above this level, right? <clears throat> so this is a good example of how flexible <clears throat> I can be with binary options in a market like the Dow. I can't really set up a trade in the futures where the market can move higher, sideways, or lower, and I can still get 33% on my risk if we stay above a specific level, okay? Now, this doesn't take into account um, the exchange fees for trading, um, which are $1 per contract each way, capped at 50 contracts. But you can see here, I mean, this, this is something that I wouldn't be able to replicate in the underlying futures. Let's take a look at a short setup because someone said, how can I use these to get short? So let's say I think that the market is going to move back to its overnight lows. That would be a pretty um, aggressive move, right? down to here by the end of the day. But let's say I'm not quite that aggressive. Let's say I think that we're going to move right back around to our midday level here where we were trading at before we had this big rip higher. Well, let's say I wanted to sell these binary options. This is how I would uh, express a short opinion. I'm going to offer them out for 85. Now I am short these options at 85, 19,9790. Nine, if the market closes above this level, they'll settle at 100 and I will lose $15. If we sell off and go below the level that we have here and close, I will get $85 in profit against that $15 in risk that I had. So that is a humongous potential return, right? About five and a half times my money five and a half to one on this particular trade, and I don't need the market to make an enormous move to the downside, right? Basically, it would be impossible to replicate this type of return without using a incredibly tight stop in the futures, which as we know, is just kind of asking to get chopped up, okay? So we're gonna go over a couple more examples here in a second, but 
before I do, I want to go over a couple more kind of dynamics <clears throat> that are unique to the binary options market. Contract size and account restrictions, uh, this I think is probably one of the most important things to understand about trading these markets because the contract size and the account restrictions are incredibly friendly to a trader that doesn't have a massive trading account but still wants to trade markets like currency pairs and commodities and indices. Every contract settles at zero or a hundred, right? Every single contract settles at zero or a hundred. So that means that I can never lose more than what is defined at the beginning of the trade in any setup. So because of that, I can take these trades with a much smaller amount of capital than I would need to trade futures or index options. We just looked at an example in crude oil where the front month out of the money options um, were $1,500 for a one lot. And I don't have the capital to do that if I only have a $10,000 trading account, even if I have a $20,000 trading account. How many of you here have traded crude oil futures in the past? Actively traded crude oil futures in the past? I'm sure some people have. But how much capital, a wild ride, yeah. How much capital do you need to have to feel comfortable doing that on an active daily, day-to-day -day basis? Quite a bit, right? Quite a bit. Those of you that have are saying, no, you never have, how many of you would be interested in doing that? but don't have the capital, probably a lot of you. $5,000, I would say you would need far more than $5,000. Maybe you meant to say $50,000 to day trade crude oil, but to try and trade crude oil with 5,000 bucks, I don't even know that you'll be able to get more than one contract at a time with a day trade margin. Crude oil contract moves a dollar, um, uh, that's a thousand bucks. I mean, that's 20% of the account, but because these contracts are smaller, the Nadex binary options, I can trade them um, with a much smaller amount of capital. You can open an account for as little as 250 bucks. And uh, what else is really kind of uh, interesting about these is that the binary options are not subject to pattern day trade rules, right? They make it kind of difficult for you to uh, trade commodities using um, uh, futures or options on futures. So then, you know, that's where the, the ETFs come from, right? Things like the USO, um, uh, the currency ETFs like the FXY and the FXE, things like this, right? All of these trade at a smaller dollar amount than the futures do. You know, the SPY, um, uh, the uh, IWM, these are meant to give traders access to these markets, right? But even if I if I have a small account, it doesn't really do me much good because if I want to day trade this stuff and the options on these, they're still subject to the pattern day trade rule. If I try to day trade any of these calls or puts, if I do that more than five uh, three times in a five day period, my account's going to be flagged, and unless I have twenty five thousand dollars minimum in my account, I'm going to be flagged as a pattern day trader and won't be able to do anything but close positions until I bring my equity back up to $25,000. So binary options are not subject to those rules, which means that they actually accomplish the goal that was set out by this entire ETF industry of creating something that retail traders could actually use rather than um, you know, risking a ton of capital in the futures and options on futures market. So does everyone follow along so far? Everyone follow along so far? Cool, cool. So we're going to jump into kind of the next part of the presentation here. Um, if uh, you guys have any other questions, please ask now because we're going to get into um, – uh, some slightly more complicated stuff here in a second. So any questions, guys? Any questions? Can you trade from El Salvador? 
Hmm, that I don't know the answer to off the top of my head. I do know that Nadex uh, supports um, a lot of different countries. I do not know if El Salvador specifically is one of them. Um, someone is from Nadex Customer Services in here. I'm sure they could answer that for you at some point throughout the presentation. But uh, yeah, what are pattern day trade rules? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. So. <clears throat> Basically, if I get flagged as a pattern day trader, it's because I'm, I'm day trading too much for the amount of money that I have in my account. There's a rule, and it's actually an exchange rule that says if I want to day trade, I have to have $25,000 in my account. If I do not have $25,000 in my account and I, and I day trade, and it's more it's three day trades in a five day period my account will get flagged as a pattern day trading account once this happens i have to get $25,000 into my account or i won't be able to make trades okay this is the rule that is applied to people that are trading stocks options on stocks, ETFs, but not binary options, not binary options. No, it does not, pattern day trading rules do not apply to binary options. These markets are kind of meant to make it easier to um, uh, trade things like indices, commodities, <clears throat> but they're subject to these pattern day trade rules. Trading binary options on Nadex does not subject a trader to those rules. So I can be as flexible as I want, right? Okay, cool. So we talked about a couple of uh, kind of basic level setups. We went over some pretty standard long and short setups. It seems like you guys uh, got that um, uh, pretty much understood, so that's good. So I want to talk about a couple of uh, more complex types of trade setups and ideas. Okay, so. <clears throat> binary options, I can use them to set up trades given the different scenarios below. Okay, let's say that I have, uh, uh, you know, a thesis that I think the market moves lower, the market moves higher, or it sees a big move, which directionally I'm unsure of, or the market trades flat. So we're going to look at some setups here with uh, live prices on the demo platform <clears throat> to cover all of these instances. We've already kind of gone over um, these two already in that Dow example. So I'm going to pick some other market here to talk about, <clears throat> and we're going to go over the next two. Okay. So first, let me ask you guys this question. How many of you are familiar with this option strategy called a strangle or a straddle? How many of you have ever heard of an option strategy called a strangle or a straddle? Yeah, pretty much everyone has. Pretty common. It's not like a, a super complicated um, way to approach uh, trading equity options or um, options on futures. But essentially, a strangle is a non-directional volatility play. If I buy a strangle in equity options, my P&L profile looks like this, okay? So I don't know which direction the market's going to break out in. I just think that it's going to have a big move higher or lower. I don't know which way. So think about the scenarios in which you might want to put a strangle on in a given security ahead of an announcement like earnings or a new product launch or a drug announcement or when we're talking about macro types of products like crude oil or the indices or uh, currencies ahead of big market moving data types of events, right? 
FOMC day, employment number, um, central bank announcements overseas for you know for currencies, crude inventory number, crop report, anything you can think of. You might have the opinion that the market's going to see a big move higher or lower, but you don't really know how to you know express that view. Well, you could do a strangle. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what this looks like in standard options on futures, and then I'm going to show you how you can do it a more risk efficient way in um, using binary options. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the options market here in the S&P futures, and we're going to put together a strangle. So I have an opinion that the market is going to move with some type of large breakout, higher or lower, by Friday. How can I express that? Well, what I can do is find the at the money strangle. So we're at 2273 half. So I'm going to buy the 2270 puts. Okay. And the 2270 half calls. 75 calls. Here it's going to cost me $11.50 to do that, okay? $11.50. That's that's how much this is trading for right now. So on a one lot what does that translate to? Let me show you guys. On a one lot, that translates to $587.50 worth of risk. Okay? My reward potential is technically unlimited, right? Because the market can move up forever, right? The market has no upward bound. I can make money if the market sells off as well, but it can't go below zero. So Technically speaking, my profit potential here is unlimited, but I know that I have to risk $587 per one lot to get that trade on. So let's try to compare that to something that I could do in binary options. <clears throat> so let's go to the US 500. I'm going to go to the weekly binary options and see if I can set up a trade. <clears throat> that would make money on a big breakout higher or lower. I'm not going to make any directional type of call in this trade. So the underlying indicative, right around 2275, right? The market just got a little bit of a bid. So let's say that I expected a non-directional breakout. What would I do? Well, I would have to get a contract that would make money should the market break higher. The 2284 halves, those are the next closest out of the money binary option, okay? So pulling up a ticket here, I'm going to bid 30 for these, okay? So this is the 2284 half binary option for this week that I bid $30 for, all right? And it looks like I actually got filled. <clears throat> now let's say that I want to go and uh, put together the other leg. And just so you guys know, this is not, I'm not actually, I don't actually think that this is what's going to happen to the market. I, I'm just, I'm going to explain to you guys the, the long side of this synthetic strangle and then what would happen if I were to sell it as well. I'm just using this as an example. So I'm not saying that I think this trade is going to work out, right? <laughs> just trying to show you guys the structure of it and, you know, how the risk and reward breaks down. Um, uh, with if I were to buy it and if I were to sell it. So next, I need to set up the other leg of this, right? I need to put on a contract that'll make money if the market breaks lower aggressively. So at 75, the next one down is the 72 half option, right? Here, they're trading for, I'm gonna put an offer out of 55 when the ticket comes up here. Okay. So now I have the 2272 half option that I sold for 55. Okay. So what what is how does this break down? What is my net position now? Well, it's a little complicated and any time that we're looking at multi-leg spreads, I like to write it down and do what's called netting out the position. So I am long the US 500 greater than 2284 half binary, binary option. This is a weekly, weekly binary option for $30. I am also short the 
US 500 greater than 22.72 half weekly binary option for $30 or $55, okay? So this is the question I should always ask. What's my worst case scenario? What's my worst case scenario in this trade? Well, remember, I was setting up a, a trade that I wanted to get a P&L profile that looked like this, right? Anywhere where the, in between there is where, the, where we lose, where I lose money, right? So the worst case scenario for me here is that the market does not move. Not move and closes at, we'll say it closes exactly where it is now on expiry. What happens? Well, my long strike will go to zero. $30 loss. My short strike what happens to this option? What happens to this option if we're at twenty two seventy five on expiry? What is it going to settle at? It goes to a hundred, right? Seventy five dollar loss. I'm sorry. $45 loss. So my net loss is 75 bucks, right? Does this make sense to everyone so far? Do we see how this trade how this trade worked out? So this is the worst case scenario is that I put on a trade expecting the market to break out and then it doesn't break out, right? That's that's the worst case scenario. I lose 75 bucks here, okay? So in that first example, in my other, how does this compare, how does this to my futures option setup? That was buying the 2270, 2275 strangle for 1150. If the market doesn't move, I lose $587.50 per one lot, right? So you can clearly see which of these is less risky, right? Which is less risky? The binary options trade setup or the options on futures trade setup? The binary options trade setup is far less risky. Yeah, feel free to ask any question that you have. But let's talk about what happens if these trades work out. <clears throat> Let's say we have two scenarios of profitability. Market breaks higher and closes above 22.84 half on expiry. What happens? What happens to these two these two options? Well, these go to 100, right? I didn't. I didn't buy the 2275s. I sold those. I sold the 2275. So if it settles above this, I lose money on that trade. Make sense? So these go to 100 bucks. Yeah. So I have a $70 profit. What happens to the options on the 2275 line? They go to $100 as well, right? So this is still a loss. This is still a $45 loss. So 
So what is my net profit? What is my net profit? No, if I have a $70 profit on the first one and the second one is a $45 loss, I've made 25 bucks. Okay? Let's say the market breaks lower in our second scenario of profitability and closes below $22.50. On expiry. What happens to my positions? These go to zero, right? Thirty dollar loss. What happens to the ones that I was short? What are they worth? If the market is below twenty two seventy two half and I'm what is the value of the twenty two seventy two half options? No. So these also go to zero. Right? All that matters is it closes above the strike didn't. So I capture the profit that I sold this for. Okay. You see this? Remember I sold them for 55. The market finished below this level. They're the US 500 greater than 2275 strike options. So the option itself is worth nothing, but I capture the profit that I sold it for. Okay. So my net profit is again $25 per one lot. Okay? So what does this mean? How, what does this mean? This means that with the market at 2275, I can set up a trade that will profit on a on a relatively small move to the upside, what, nine and a half point move to the upside, higher, or a two and a half point move lower by Friday. Does everyone understand? Now, how much would I need the market to move in this example here? Well, I would need the market to move a whole lot more. I would need it to move 11 and a half points in either direction just to break even. In this example, and <clears throat> if this happens, I make $25 in profit on $75 in risk, okay? That's a pretty good return on my money. For this to happen in this particular setup, and let's remember in this one, market was at 22.72 half. For this particular setup, what do I need to happen here? My break even points would be twenty-two half to the downside, 11 and a half more than 11 uh, and a half points to the downside and 2286 half to the upside which is what 14 points to the up 14 points 14 point move up or down that I would need to get to break even to get a profit of 30% I would then have to have like another three and a half points tacked onto that to get to the same level that I can get by a nine and a half point move up or a two and a half point move down in the S&P using the binary option. And I don't have to risk $587 per one lot to do this. What is my risk per one lot in this trade? 25 bucks, or I'm sorry, 75 bucks, right? So I can, I can put together something with really any size of the account. 
Does this make sense to everybody? <clears throat> Did we all follow along here? I wanted to go over the flip side of this, where what it would look like if, we're, if I were to sell it, but we only have like a few minutes left here, um, and I want to make sure that we all understand this. Have any of you ever considered using the binary options to set up trades like this rather than just making directional plays? Because I've, if I were to flip my positions around and would have <clears throat> bought one and sold the other, then I can create a setup where I could profit if the market doesn't move. Right, I would flip that P&L profile around completely, and now I profit as long as there isn't a big move higher or lower. Makes sense. Makes sense. So for those of you that trade uh, options in something like the SPY, or the Dow, or the Russell for what they call income, selling credit spreads every week. This could be an alternative to that. It can also be an alternative to those of you that look to buy straddles and strangles ahead of things like the unemployment number, or FOMC day, or the minutes, or essential bank actions, or anything that you can think of. <clears throat> right? Good way for me to play volatility with a much, much cheaper approach to um, uh, that type of trading strategy. Someone says, I use spreads, but my strikes are further from the indicated price to keep the cost low. Yeah, then that's, you know, that's a thing. That's, that's a thing, you know, George. Obviously, if I were to widen these out, I would get a better reward to risk ratio. But the example that I would, the point that I was trying to make was that a comparable position in the futures options would require way more capital, a much bigger move, and have a worse reward to risk ratio on the same type of move in the underlying than the binary setup would. I mean, far and away, this is going to be my, my approach. Making $25 for the week does not seem like much profit. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> $25 isn't that much for a week, but we're not talking about that. That's just per one lot. What I'm getting, let me ask you this question. Would you rather make, would you rather make um, 30 cents on a dollar, and let's say you had a million dollars, would you rather make 30 cents on a million one dollar investments or 300 grand on one one million dollar investment? I mean, it's the same thing, right? $25 is my profit for the week, but I only risked $75 to get that. So my return on risk is what? 33%. So I mean, does $25 seem like a small profit now when we look at it in that context? I don't think so. If I have a small account, you know, if I have a small account and I, I do a, a, let's say I do a four lot of these, right? Let's say I do a four lot and I make $100 on $300 worth of risk over the course of the week. That's not bad, right? I mean, it's not it's not like the exchange fees are so high that it, you know, destroys this ROI. They charge a dollar per per contract to it. It's not it's not that excessive and I can scale this up as much as I want. The point being you know, when we have a smaller amount of risk per one lot, the absolute bare minimum to play <laughs> to play this game is five hundred and eighty seven dollars per one lot. Right? Now I can do a one lot or I can do a hundred lot. It all depends on how much capital I have, but the minimum to play this game, which is as we see, giving me a better probability of profiting because I'm looking for a smaller move. The entry, the price of entry for this is only seventy-five bucks, right? Does that make sense now, Chuck? Follow along. Cool. All right, so I wanna, I wanna leave a, like a call.
couple minutes for questions, but before I uh, get to that, I do want to give you guys a chance to uh, check out <clears throat> something that we have to offer you guys today. We have a, a technical indicator that we use every day, and it's fantastic for trading binary options. I use it whenever I trade them, and it's actually built into the Nadex platform. Uh, it's an ebook that you can get here completely free. It costs you nothing whatsoever to get it. Just put in your email address, and it gets sent to you. Um, uh, and you're able to go through it at your own pace. Really great book. It's one of our most popular eBooks and goes all over the Ichimoku cloud in depth. So if you're not familiar with it, pick it up. If you are familiar with it, pick it up anyway because it's got some pretty cool stuff in it and I think will really help anyone who's interested in trading binary options or anything else for that matter. It works really well for Forex. I think, I think we've got a lot of Forex people in here based on some of the comments you guys were making. So definitely um, uh, check it out here. Um, I want you guys to uh, take advantage of it because we don't normally give this away for free. <clears throat> so... Uh, Go to the link here, alphasart.com slash nadex2016 to uh, get the book, and I will take a couple more questions now, guys. So any last-minute questions? We only have a couple of minutes here. Any last-minute questions? I wanted to get into <laughs> a couple of more strategies, but I guess we'll have to uh, save that for the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you fill this out, the book, it's sent to your email right away. It, it's emailed to you. The book is emailed to you. 